Hey, everybody. I'm Dan Davidson. And I'm Bill Smith. And welcome to this, I would say special, but I will say necessary edition of the Trek Geeks podcast. You may have already noticed we haven't started this with any of the usual fanfare. No music, no celeb intro, um, no ads for fansets or science division. Uh, because, Dan, the topic today is is one that honestly is kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, it really is heartbreaking. Um, as many or probably all of our Star Trek listeners and fans know, we unfortunately lost our beloved Michelle Nichols uh, recently. Um, it came as a shock. Uh, it was a it was a day that a, a couple of people passed away. And before we get started, Bill, I'm, st- I'm I want to I want to do this real quick. It's not something you were expecting, but I want to do it. In addition to what we're talking about with Michelle. Uh, everyone at the Trek Geeks Podcast Network, and I'm sure all of our listeners um, send you our condolences for the loss of your sister last week. Uh, that was a shock to you as well. It was unexpected. Um, we know, I know that it was a tough week for you, and then having Michelle on top of that. Um, so we're here for you, man, and uh, we wish you all the best and keep those good memories of, of Elizabeth close. Thank you. I'll certainly do that. To say it was a rough week is a bit of an understatement. I mean, I, I was... Well, let me, I'll tell you where I was when I heard, because we've, mm-hmm. we've done this with other episodes. I was actually at a, at a memorial luncheon at my brother-in-law's house to sort of celebrate my sister's life with a bunch of family and some of her close friends. And I just happened to look at my phone and I saw on, uh, on Facebook that the official Nichelle Nichols account had posted that she had passed. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm not going to lie. I I went from a sobbing mess to a blubbering mess. This one, I got to tell you, man, I I don't, I don't necessarily think it's because of when it happened, like right on the heels of, of my sister's passing. Mm -hmm. But, um, this one hits me almost as hard as, as Leonard passing. It really does. Yeah. We're going to talk about the reasons of that. I'm sure it's funny that you mentioned, you know, exactly what you were doing and where you were. It kind of blurred for me. Um, when I found out you actually sent me an IM about it. And to tell you the truth, I was so taken aback by it. I don't remember what I was doing when you told me. I, 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 wow. I and I, I do remember that that morning, um, Sue and I were planning on doing a bunch of stuff. We were like, you know, you know, I was gung ho and, and, and joking around and having fun. And then the rest of the day, I just wasn't, I just wasn't like as, happy-go-lucky as I usually am. And it was, it just really, it really affected me. Now it's, it's weird that I say that because I can tell you exactly what I was doing, where I was the second that I heard about Leonard Nimoy. I was walking down one of the streets at the old port in Portland, Maine, and you texted me, I was going to lunch with my team. I don't know the difference. It's, it's hitting me. It's not as hard as Leonard for me, um, but it's still extremely hard. And um, as you had that celebration of life with your sister, Elizabeth, we're going to try to do that a little bit uh, with this discussion today, but it's not going to be easy. I mean, unfortunately we're getting older. (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're, we're no spring chickens and, and neither are the cast of the original series. And it's, it's an unfortunate reality that this is going to start happening where, where some of our beloved people from Star Trek are going to be uh, passing on. And it's, it's sad. You know, I, I made this uh, comment to, to somebody with regard to the passing of my sister. And I think it holds true for our Star Trek family as well is that nobody really tells you that the price you pay for getting older is getting more and more phone calls or notifications that somebody you love is just all of a sudden gone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's grief is, I've said this before on on the podcast, especially one of the memorial editions, grief is a burden. Grief is burdensome. And we feel it when these people, these, these Star Trek, you know, um, living icons who have been part of our lives for, you know, <laughs> almost 50 years in, in, mm-hmm. in our case, right. um, pass away. You know, we felt it with Leonard. We felt it with Rene. We felt it with Aaron. We felt it with Anton. And we feel it now in particular with Nichelle. I got to tell you, Nichelle Nichols was my first celebrity crush. Right. Yeah. You know, I know you've said that and many times. When I look at it in, you know, in that vein, it's like a, a piece of, my childhood, somebody I, I genuinely had a fondness for, Mm -hmm. you know, in my younger years is now all of a sudden no longer with us. And it's a little heartbreaking. It is a little heartbreaking. There are things that I've been able to take comfort in now. Of course, we obviously pass along all of our best thoughts and condolences to all the members of her family. Um, as, as we would anytime. It's interesting that you mentioned, 
some of these other people. One thing I will say, I texted my brother about it the night uh, of it, uh, January 30th, the night of, or th- July 30th, rather, uh, or the next, I forget w- what day it was. It's, it all, it's all meshed together. Um, it is. And one of the, he said something to me when I texted him, he, I, I, I said, oh, by the way, Nichelle passed. And, and his response was, oh man, how old was she? And I said, she was 89. And his response kind of made me double take. He went, wow, good for her. And it just, it struck me a little weird and I had to actually think about it for a second. And of course, you know, that's a, that's a nice long full life. So good for her that she lived that long, but, but it, it, it makes me think of what I've talked about several times on the podcast with you. You talked about how, you know, as we get older, we're going to get those calls from that. We don't expect that, that people that we know and love have, have passed on. And, and you talked about how, um, you know, if you haven't talked to a family member or someone that you care about in a while, pick up the phone, reach out because yeah. you never know when you're not going to have that opportunity again. And the same can be said with the Star Trek family, because it's something I've talked about. I never went up to Aaron because he always looked busy at conventions and I didn't want to bother him. And he's there for the very reason that I wanted to go up there to meet him, to get an right. autograph. Didn't right. do it with Renee. I will always be so happy that the last convention we went to, I went up and talked to Nichelle as, and I talked as Galt. I, I did the Galt voice and, and got a picture with her. That is something that I will always treasure because it's one of the first times I actually was able to do that and not feel awkward doing it. So I was very oh, wow. happy about that. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, we have to be candid. I mean, the last several years of Nichelle's life, mm-hmm. we lived in controversy and through no fault of hers. Right. Um, the power struggle between her son and her former manager, um, unfortunately, I, I think, cast a shadow over her remaining years in public mm-hmm. life. Um, one of my great regrets, the pandemic, uh, I was supposed to go to the Nichelle Nichols Farewell Con. That's right. It was originally scheduled in May of 2020. They pushed it off. It happened in December this past year, 2021. Mm-hmm. And it was at a time where I was unable to go. I was really bummed because I was genuinely looking forward to that celebration of her and right. her career. And and now she's gone, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 relieving in a sense because obviously she was suffering from from dementia yes. and, and probably possibly from some other conditions. But it's it, it's the kind of thing that just leaves my heart feeling a little heavy. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. When I went up to her as Galt and, and talked to her in Galt's voice, I uh, I honestly don't know if she recognized the character I was playing, if she understood what I was saying, because she just had this huge smile on her face. She didn't talk. She kind of just kind of made like a little coo sound, like she was excited that I was there. (laughs) That's all I needed. And you're right. it, it, It really was sad to see. She obviously was not the same the last couple of years that she was in the public eye at conventions. Um, and it's, it's really too bad, but it was a great moment. I, um, I, I believe it was her son who was there with me, uh, with her at the time. Let me come behind the desk and get right down and kneel right next to her for that picture. And it's just something I'll always treasure. Now I got to tell you recently, I, I logged into Paramount plus and I pulled up the documentary that came out mm-hmm. a couple years ago called woman in motion yes. about uh, Nichelle's involvement with n- recruiting for NASA particularly women and people of color into the astronaut training program. Um, And I learned a bunch of things during that documentary that I had not known before. If you haven't seen Woman in Motion, please fire up Paramount Plus in the US or Crave in Canada and watch it because it is a wonderful look at the influence Nichelle had Mm -hmm. in real life on people who were going to the stars. One of the things I learned was that three of the astronauts in the Challenger disaster were recruited by Nichelle Nichols. I did not know that either. Wow. Huh. Yeah. See, I've only seen the trailer, unfortunately. I've wanted to watch it. I just have not yet. Of course, that's one of those things. Okay, now I will do it, of course. And it's sad the reason that now I will do it. But I've heard a lot of people this week talk about that documentary and how wonderful it is. You also made mention, I think, that uh, of something that takes place at the end. So over the end credits... Um, you know, music starts, Nichelle is in a studio and she's singing an arrangement of fly me to the moon. And it has quickly become one of my favorite versions of the song. It, I'm sure she's lip syncing on film and that's fine. The recording is definitely done in her Mm eighties because you can hear it in her voice. 
but man, her voice is still like butter. <laughs> it is seriously, it is just gorgeous. And in the it it on the screen in the film, you see a twinkle in her eye. Yeah. And it is just it makes you smile through tears. It really does. And I gotta tell you, it's it's amazing. It's one of the, it's, it's the best possible way they could have ended that documentary. And plus, I mean, she's a legendary performer mm-hmm. anyway. What better way to close that film than with her, you know, doing what got her started in the business in the first place, singing? Absolutely. I mean, we saw it in Trek. We saw it in TOS. We saw it in the movies. Um, she brought that aspect of her career everywhere she went. Um, and you can even think, think now she brought it to nasa because she does it in this documentary which is about what she does uh in collaboration with nasa so that's that's really good i am going to definitely watch it i'm hopefully i'll watch it sometime in the next couple of days i be ready with some tissues yeah and it's really for that sort of that last part the first 20 minutes is about her career Mm -hmm. and how she got to where she was and then the remainder of it was um really kind of eye-opening i don't think enough attention has been paid to the influence she had on America's space program. And I, I don't want to say near single handedly, but um, it, it pretty much is. It's, it's really remarkable. I, I think it's, it's great to be able to have that different aspect of her life. That meant a lot to so many people, uh, uh, which, which um, astronaut was it who actually was in TNG and has come right out and said, if it wasn't for Nichelle, I never would have become an astronaut. A May Jemison, who exactly. I believe was recruited by Nichelle yes, Nichols. Exactly. I mean, so so she definitely had that influence. I mean, we as fans, I mean, there are so many people that that um, have 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 made public comments about what Nichelle's groundbreaking role and how she was a trailblazer got them to do things in their career. Whoopi Goldberg is a perfect example of that. Um, but it's also nice to know that she had uh, such an impact in a different area of the world, not just entertainment and, 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 you know, getting all of these, these women and people of color to, to, to be recognized for what they truly are, which is fantastic. And, and I think that that legacy of hers is going to continue for a long time. I would not be surprised, my friend, if at some point something in NASA is renamed the Nichelle Nichols, something, something. I, I can only hope. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I think it would be a, a fitting legacy for, for Nichelle Nichols. Yep. Um, I, I think that, you know, we, we know her as the actress, we know her as the singer. And I, I think that more and more people are starting to learn. Um, not only did she have an influence, you know, on, uh, as far as representation, she was the original representation in Star Trek. Absolutely. I mean, let's be honest about yep. that. But I, I think that people are learning that even as far as science and technology you know, the STEM program, um, that, she played a direct role in helping to change the lives of some of those people. And that, I mean, you don't, you don't hear that, you know, it's, and more people need to know. I think it's important that we, she could, she's an example to a lot of people that are in Hollywood and are famous and using that fame for a greater good than just themselves. I think she's a perfect example of somebody who does that. We have all kinds of people that do that, but Sometimes we have others who don't do that. They use their fame for their own reasons. And she's a perfect example of being able to use that um, to help. A perfect example of that uh, right off the top of my head is George Takei had a wonderful uh, yes. um, series of tweets this past week um, in regards to Nichelle and talked about how she would help him when he decided to run for some type of office in California at one point. It was city council so, in LA. Yeah, I think. And, and she did everything she could because she had the power of that name to help him at fundraisers and stuff like that. And I thought that was, that was just wonderful. Not only a friend helping a friend in a situation like that, but what she's done for, for, for countless uh, people uh, in NASA and in other walks of life all throughout the world. Without a doubt. I mean, it's, it's rare to see, a celebrity use, you know, the, the, the weight of their, their popularity mm-hmm. and their celebrity, the way that, that she did these days. Um, clearly actors of all kinds get involved and by actors, I do mean men and women. Um, but you know, if you think about this singularly, if Nichelle leaves Star Trek after season one, like she originally intended to before she had that infamous conversation with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm-hmm. 
it's possible that Star Trek doesn't look the way it does today. And it's also possible that things that happened as a result of her being that first black woman on a bridge and fourth in command would not have happened with regular society these days. That was another helping factor with the whole civil rights movement. And, and from what I've learned and what I believe in uh, growing up just after that took place. Absolutely. So it's, it, you cannot really overstate her contribution to Star Trek. We've said many times that Leonard Nimoy was the heart and soul of Star Trek. But I think in many ways, Nichelle is the embodiment of everything that Star Trek is. It's funny. I know that we've had discussions about um, uh, Majel being the first lady of Star Trek. Yeah. I think a lot of people this week have said it correctly with Nichelle being the queen of Star Trek. I think that's a very good title for her, for what she did for the franchise. And it's interesting to note also, I was watching an interview with her recently. Somebody posted it. I don't know if it was on Good Morning America or somewhere else, but she had an interview with the cast of, of Star Trek when they were doing the movies. Uh, and TNG was just getting ready to come out. And her initial reaction, she had said at the time, was like, oh, good. I'll finally be able to get that character off my back. And it won't be the thing that I carry with me my whole life. And then <laughs> then she changed her mind on that and then ended up being something that she completely uh, uh, loved for the rest of her life and, and, and her career. And I'm glad she did. I know that I know that at other times people have talked about whether you get kind of stereotyped into a specific role. Um, but you know what? It. It means and meant so many things to so many different people, and I'm glad that uh, that that um, thinking of her has changed. You know, she there were some wonderful tributes that poured in this week. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and probably in addition to George Takei, I have to say that the uh, the op ed written by Celia Rose Gooding oh. from Star Trek: Strange New Worlds for the Hollywood Reporter was right up there among them. Yep. It was just for somebody said that you know she's not much of a writer. It really was one of the most wonderful and fitting tributes that could have ever been done for a, a true icon. A true icon. Can you imagine how Celia felt the first day she was on the set of Strange New World playing this character? No. <laughs> I, I really can't. I mean, we can talk about all the other people that have played other characters. Of course, Anson Mount with Pike and all the others. We got Kirk and all that. This one is is the uh, this one and Spock are the two. It seems that we're always talking about Spock and Uhura um, as those those type of of characters and roles. That must have been amazing for her. And I loved how she ended her article talking about how um, she, she just she she wouldn't be doing this if it was not for Nichelle. She would not be in this role. And and I, I got to agree with you. I read the article last night. And I was really moved by it. I thought it was one of the, yeah. the best uh, best um, tributes that has been uh, released in the past week since Nichelle passed. So many amazing tributes. Obviously, Zoe Saldana mm -hmm. had a wonderful Instagram post. Uh, Sonequa Martin-Green. You know, so many people um, whose lives have been touched by this person. And you know, it's the kind of thing you hope you know, that, that Nichelle knew or at least understood exactly how many people she touched. And I have to believe she did. I have to believe that. I think one of the things we talk about sometimes how I don't want to, I don't want to put everybody in the same basket, but we've talked about how sometimes it seems that perhaps the legacy cast members sometimes are not as personable or, or in, or, or, um, conversational as some of the new show cast members at conventions. And Nichelle was definitely not that I have heard so many stories and seen so many pictures of people who have engaged with her for, for a long period of time at conventions because she welcomed that our good friend, James Kerwin posted something the other day, uh, which I really thought was great. He met her once uh, years and years ago, the first time he met her, um, and didn't know what to say when he was going to, to, to be up at the table. And he's like, oh, maybe I'll just say live long and prosper. But then all the people in front of him were saying the same thing. So he couldn't <laughs> think of what he wanted to say. And when he got up to the table, he kind of blurted that out. And he said that her response and her smile, it was as if that was the first time anybody had ever said that to her. That tells you the type of person that Nichelle was. She gave that importance to every single person that came up to say hi to her. I got to tell you about, God, I want to say it was about 15 years ago or so. I was at a Star Trek convention in Vegas at the the old Las Vegas Hilton, mm -hmm. where the convention used to be back in the day and where the Star Trek experience was. Right. 
And I happened to be walking down the long hallway to the convention center in the hotel. And I happened to be behind Nichelle Nichols and the, the creation volunteer that was escorting her from point A to point B. And one of the fans you know, over in the side of the hallway where some tables had been set up yelled out, we love you, Nichelle. And people started applauding. And she stopped and smiled from ear to ear and said, I love all of you too, genuinely. And you could feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just her saying, I love you guys too. You know, it, it was, she adored this fandom. Yeah. And I really think that, that that's obvious in every interaction that people have ever had mm -hmm. with her. You know, every day I go through my Twitter feed or almost every day and and there's, you know, it's it's almost all Star Trek related, of course, because who I have friends and everything. But the amount of outpouring of love for Nichelle over the last several days, it hasn't slowed down yet. It's today's August 3rd. She passed away on the 30th of July. I mean, it's only a few days, but the outpouring of support has not diminished on social media that I can see. And one of the things that hit me the hardest, I think, man, is when I was, when this all came about on, uh, over the weekend, <clears throat> excuse me, I was trying to think of what a, a great way to show this loss would be. We've seen images of Kirk sitting alone in the, in the, um, uh, <clears throat> in the conference room or whatever, but I'm like, okay, her, her communication seat is, is now empty. And 10 minutes after I thought of that, our good friend James Colley from uh, the uh, official set tour up in Ticonderoga, their Twitter feed posted an image of her station on the bridge of the Enterprise empty. And that hurt. It really did. I was doing okay that day until I saw that. Yeah. It's kind of like seeing the, uh, the Spock's chair on the Enterprise empty in Star Trek 2. Mm-hmm. You know that 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 one shot where you Kirk realizes cool chair. he's yeah yeah where Kirk realizes he's gone down to engineering. Yep. They said, Jim, you better get down here and hurry. Um, and you realize that 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 something is very wrong. Mm -hmm. Seeing that chair empty like that just uh, it it leveled me in a way I didn't think I could have been leveled already. Yep. And that it really spoke volumes. There's been other ones that I've seen. Uh, there's a there's a cast photo from I think Star Trek Six, and all of the people that have passed away are kind of black and white, where all the, the the three remaining original crew members are still in color. And that one was that one was sad, but I'll tell you what, not as not as gut punching as that picture of her chair, and of course, magnificently recreated by the folks up in Ticonderoga. I mean, it's it's the set of the Enterprise yeah. from the '60s right yeah. there. Um, it was it was wonderful, and I believe she was at Ticonderoga at one point she was up there for a visit there's some great pictures of her with with james and uh yeah that was a tough one um and i'm sure there's going to be more that are going to come out in the coming days that are going to be like oh man i will always be so glad that i actually got the photo op with her her last vegas convention mm -hmm. and had her sign it because it um i i would have i would have kicked myself if i hadn't yeah you know it's it, it she she really is Star Trek or was Star Trek. Well, she is Star Trek royalty. Yes. Let's just leave it in the present yep. tense. She she is Star Trek royalty, and I would have completely regretted it if I hadn't. The way I regret not having something from Leonard other than right. my copy of his book. Right. Um, you know, I have. It just. I'm it's just it's it's just a kick in the gut. I'm trying to I trying to remember if I have my an autograph picture with her. I I honestly am I can't remember if I did it. I know I wanted to, but I don't remember if I did. I would have loved well, to have but, gotten that picture with uh, with me as Galt with her, but unfortunately, I'd, I'd never got one of those printed out. So, no, but I mean that photo is is gold, yeah, man. It, I love it. It's and I've actually taken it and I found a program that I could like make the eyes glow for me for Galt. So I have <laughs> I have one of regular eyes and one of Galt eyes, and it's just it's awesome. Love it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite episode with Uhura? Um, a big movie a episode is shorthand for yeah. for movie or or televised episode, um, or do you have multiples? I don't know. I know you. I don't know if I have multiple. I don't know if I have an episode. I have a favorite Uhura moment, which is probably not going to surprise you of what it is, and that's her. Oh, I think I know. That's her. That's her um, mirror universe character. She nails it, and I'm going to say she looks so freaking awesome in that uniform with the midriff and everything like that. I love it, and I love how she's nervous, but at the same time, she does what she needs to. She backhands Sulu, and she pulls that dagger out of her boot. 
and then the way she puts it back in her boot later on, I, I, I've always thought it's my favorite Uhura moment in all of Star Trek. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I've, I've got a couple, and they're both animated. Oh, excellent. I'm going to say the episode of the, an, the original Star Trek animated series, the Lorelei signal, where Uhura finally gets command of the Enterprise, mm -hmm. um, is probably one of my favorite Uhura episodes. Because... Of of all the stuff we just talked about, here she was, you know, representing, yeah. you know, on screen. And now here she is, an African-American woman in command of the flagship of the Federation because the men have all been compromised. Yeah. And it, it, she's the only one who can save them. And it's funny. I was reading some some of these some of these things that we've been seeing on social media. Aaron Harvey posted something out uh, within just the last day and a half or so where he was talking about that episode um, and she overheard him and she yelled out. Yeah. And she's been trying to get back in the captain's chair ever since. <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines. I thought yeah, that yeah. was great. And then my other favorite is the moment in Star Trek Prodigy. Oh, my God. In the Kobayashi yeah. Maru episode where Dal is sort of going through no win scenario after no win scenario. And it pulls in so many iconic voices through, you know, uh, pre-recorded audio from, mm -hmm. from, from episodes of the past. And I mean, there's, there's Rene Aubergenois, there's Leonard Nimoy and there's, there's Jimmy Dewan mm -hmm. and there's Nichelle Nichols. Right. And just that moment alone is like, Oh man. And it was un so unexpected. Not expected Completely. for any of them, and and a horror. And what what I think was great was that Dal asked to bring in all the greats, and of course, yeah. there she is. Yeah, that was good. And and to know that you know in the the most recent season of Star Trek Picard, there was a USS mm -hmm. Uhura um, to was it, honor. Was it the Uhura, or was the ship captained by her? No, it was okay. the USS okay. Uhura. At least I'm pretty sure it was. I'm sure with a quick Google, yeah, double check we that. can we'll, figure that out. Yeah, we'll, we'll check into that. But yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's great to see. Um, uh, let me go back to the Prodigy thing for just a second while you're looking that up. One of the things that somebody asked about uh, online this week, which I think would be great, is at the end of that Prodigy episode, Kobayashi Maru, they say in loving memory of, and they list Leonard and Renee and Jimmy. They should add Nichelle to that. I agree with that. Uh, there was a USS Uhura okay, cool. in Star Trek Picard. Um, you are correct. I mean, there was also another ship where she was listed as the captain. Okay, all right, cool. In history, yeah. Um, but in uh, in the Stargazer, there is a USS Uhura. Awesome, that's fantastic and well deserved. Yeah. It, it's yeah. It, it's cool to see all these kind of tributes. I know that uh, it's happened in the past, but uh, I saw just this morning that um, a whole bunch of Star Trek fans playing Star Trek Online had a torch. Uh, lighting ceremony uh, in the game uh, for Nichelle uh, over the weekend. I'm sure that the um, uh, people who do that game and, and put out the content will have some kind of some kind of remembrance for her as they have done for people like Renee and Aaron and, and of course, Leonard. So um, I'm sure it's going to be going on for quite a while that we're going to see all kinds of things creeping up and other great memories. I will be very happy or not happy. It's not the right word. I will be very much looking forward to some kind of a tribute to her in Vegas in a few weeks. Same. Uh, I, I'm almost positive it will happen. Mm -hmm. So I am. Um, you know, we love recording this podcast. We've been doing it now for over seven years. But these are the episodes we truly hate to do because it means that we've lost yet another member of the family. Yeah, it, it, we. it's it's never easy. It, it's funny. I was going back when I was making the cover for this. I was going back and I said, we've done too many of these. I, 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 I really, I really it really sucks. I mean, I, I, I love doing the album covers and trying to find something new, but when I know I got to pick that all black one and then find a, a picture to, to represent, uh, uh, the character and the actor, uh, it, it's not easy. And, um, and, and I totally, I totally get where you're coming from, man. And I, I totally understand and, and agree with you hundred percent. It's, it, it does not get easy. And I don't think it's going to get easy any easier as time goes on. It really won't. And I think that's really the sobering thing. You know, we talked about it earlier in, in this particular episode. You know, we've been watching Star Trek for so long that these people and these characters are a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And then when we lose them, it's it's a real loss that we feel. And, you know, now with so many series and so many casts, yeah. um, it's just going to keep getting, I don't want to say worse, but it, it's going to happen more and more often. It is. I mean, And that's that's kind of sobering. Yeah, I mean, think of it. We have three people uh, of the original crew, the original bridge crew, 
uh, are the only ones left from TOS for the original big names, I should say. Not, I know there's a lot of people still involved right. in the TOS, but of course we've got uh, Walter, George, and 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 Bill. So it'll, it, it's and 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 I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to put any negativity on any, but the cast Certainly. TNG is thirty something freaking years old now. I mean, it's thirty five, thirty five years old, and the cast was probably in their late twenties, early thirties at the least, at the most. Uh, when the when the series started, so yeah, Patrick Stewart is in his eighties. I know. <laughs> I was just gonna say, and we have Patrick you Stewart, know. who's who's just uh, who's uh, up there as well, but still cranking out episodes, man. <laughs> when you consider the original series, most of the people who worked on it are gone now, mm-hmm. or a, a good number of them. Yep, you know, there are still many who are still with us, and thankfully so. Um, they are a treasure, but. As far as Star Trek fans go, it's our responsibility to remember and honor their work because it has meant so much to all of us, not just Nichelle and not just Leonard and and not just Jimmy and Dee, but the Gene Coons of the world and the Dorothy Fontanas and the Gene Roddenberrys and everybody else, Watch Hang and, you know, Jerry Finnerman and, and everybody who played such a pivotal role in the original Star Trek the responsibility is upon us to honor their work yes. and to keep their memories alive mm-hmm. by talking about it. And that's that's part of, of what we try to do and hopefully successfully. I, I think we are successful at it. I think it's it's easy to do because it's something that we are so passionate about and something that we love so much. Um, we will continue to do it uh, for as long as uh, there are airways for us to do it in. Um, and I think that that, that shows the love that we have for the people that played these characters and for the characters as well. Absolutely. Well, as I said with Leonard, um, she was with us for a time, but now she belongs to the ages. Nichelle Nichols, gone too soon at the age of 89. 